Mesa, Reverend Rock. I'm grateful for your generous invitation to state my views. While the so-called religious issue is necessarily and properly the chief topic here tonight, I want to emphasize from the outset that I believe that we have far more critical issues in the 1960 campaign. The spread of communist influence until it now festers only 90 miles from the coast of Florida. The humiliating treatment of our president and vice president by those who no longer respect our power. The hungry children I saw in West Virginia. The old people who cannot pay their doctor's bills. The families forced to give up their farms. An America with too many slums, with too few schools, and too late to the moon and out of space. These are the real issues which should decide this campaign. And they are not religious issues. For war and hunger and ignorance and despair, no, no religious barrier. But because I am a Catholic, and no Catholic has ever been elected president, the real issues in this campaign have been obscured, perhaps deliberately, in some quarters less responsible than this. So it is apparently necessary for me to state once again not what kind of church I believe in, for that should be important only to me, but what kind of America I believe in. I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute, where no Catholic prelate would tell the president, should he be Catholic, how to act, and no Protestant minister would tell his parishioners for whom to vote. When no church or church school is granted any public funds or political preference. And where no man is denied public office merely because his religion differs from the president who might appoint him or the people who might elect him. I believe in an America that is officially neither Catholic, Protestant, nor Jewish, where no public official either requests or accepts instructions on public policy from the Pope the National Council of Churches, or any other ecclesiastical source. When no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace or the public acts of its officials, and where religious liberty is so indivisible that an act against one church is treated as an act against all. For while this year it may be a Catholic, against whom the finger of suspicion is pointed. In other years, it has been, and may someday be again, a Jew, or a Quaker, or a Unitarian, or a Baptist. It was Virginia's harassment of Baptist preachers, for example, that led to Jefferson's statute of religious freedom. Today, I may be the victim, but tomorrow, it may be you. Until the whole fabric of our harmonious society is ripped apart, at a time of great national peril. Finally, I believe in an America where religious intolerance will someday end, where all men and all churches are treated as equals, where every man has the same right to attend or not to attend the church of his choice, where there is no Catholic vote, no anti-Catholic vote, no block voting of any kind, and where Catholics, Protestants, and Jews at both the lay and the pastoral levels will refrain from those attitudes of disdain and division which have so often marred their works in the past and promote instead the American ideal of brotherhood. That is the kind of America in which I believe and it represents the kind of presidency in which I believe. A great office that must be neither humbled by making it the instrument of any religious group nor tarnished by arbitrarily withholding it, its occupancy from the members of any one religious group. I believe in a president whose views on religion are his own private affair, neither imposed upon him by the nation nor imposed by the nation upon him as a condition to holding that office.